Thank you, Minister. We'll now begin the media availability. One question, one follow-up. First question goes to Sarah Sears from CBC. Good morning, Prime Minister. Good morning. The CSIS director testified this morning that even though he may not have read the briefing notes word for word, he did warn your government about, a Chinese, about Chinese interference, including that the PRC clandestinely supported a candidate. Why didn't you act? Is it because you don't have trust in David Vignot? I have tremendous trust in our, our intelligence agencies, as I testified to. They do really important work to keep Canadians safe. And the conversations that we've had with them since 2015 about the reality of foreign interference is exactly why we stepped up with so many brand new mechanisms so that our country can stand stronger and clearer against foreign interference. That's why uh, we created the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians over the objections of the Conservatives. It's why we uh, created NSERA. It's why uh, we move forward with uh, the site task force of security agencies to lean in uh, to what's happening in terms of uh, foreign interference and security every day during our elections. It's why we have a panel of five top civil servants to weigh in on that. No government in the history of the country has ever taken foreign interference as seriously as we have uh, over the past number of years in terms of the institutions, the measures, the new tools that we've developed. But as the director of CSIS highlighted, there's always more to do and that's why we're continuing to work to move forward on new initiatives like our National Security Council, for example, uh, that we've created. There are many things to do and we're going to continue uh, to work on them and keep Canadians and our democracy safe. The NDP is expressing reservations about the carbon tax. What does it signal that you have lost many premiers and now you may be losing the NDP's support for your plan as well? I feel for the NDP and for Jigmeet. Um, this is a hard moment. There are political headwinds. There's a lot of political pressure. I'm certainly feeling it. Everyone should be feeling it. Uh, by folks out there who are worried about affordability, who are worried uh, about climate change. And I don't know. I, I, my perspective is this is a time to actually do more to fight climate change, not less. To do more to put money in people's pockets. And it's not a handful of conservative politicians and premiers that are going to uh, turn me away from continuing the fight against climate change, the fight for a better future, and the fight to put more money in people's pockets. So I don't entirely understand the position of the NDP in pulling back both from affordability measures and uh, from uh, the fight against climate change, but I can assure everyone that this government my government will continue to step up on the fight against climate change. We'll continue to put more money in families' pockets. As of this coming Monday, the 15th, families right across the country in uh, carbon, federal carbon backstop jurisdictions will be receiving the CCR in their bank accounts, the Canada Carbon Rebate, that will give them more money up front then they will be, on average, paying out with the price on pollution. That's extra money for affordability, for groceries, uh, for costs that families are facing. The Conservatives are telling everyone they will take away those carbon rebate checks and step back in the fight against climate change. It's unfortunate that their arguments seem to be resonating with the NDP. But this government? will continue to be steadfast in putting more money in 8 out of 10 Canadians' pockets with the Canada Carbon Rebate, particularly middle-income and low-income families, and continuing to fight against climate change. And on the issue of industrial pricing that the NDP is suggesting, that's a great idea. That's why we have it in place. That's why we're doing that. That's why we're making sure that heavy emitters pay for their pollution as well. But it's also why, recognizing that big companies often pass on costs to citizens, that we will be putting more money in citizens' pockets as we continue to step up in the fight against climate change.
Uh, Colin DeMello from Global News. Um, on, on the carbon pricing, it, it's not just politicians, it's people as well. A new poll by Liaison Strategies found a majority of Ontario residents rank the cost of living higher than environmental protections, and a plurality are in favor of abolishing the price in carbon, even if it means eliminating their personal carbon price rebate. So can you tell Ontarians why your government's price on carbon is more important than their ability to make ends meet? But the way we price carbon actually puts more money in the pockets of 8 out of 10 families, like families in Ontario, uh, where uh, the cost of living is high and where the need to fight climate change is clear with every wildfire, with every flood, with every drought. The Parliamentary Budget Officer concerned, confirmed that 8 out of 10 families get more money from the way we're pricing pollution, because we put a price on pollution and then we give that money back to Canadians. And that means as of this Monday on April 15th, the CCR, the Canada Carbon Rebate, is going to appear in people's bank accounts. They're going to get checks for it. That gives them more money than the average family will pay in carbon price over the next three months. That's how it works. It's a measure on affordability, and it's a measure to fight climate change at the same time. And we're going to continue to deliver that money to Canadians, and we're going to continue to stand strong in making sure that pollution isn't free anywhere across the country. And if Mr. Polyev wants to take away those affordability checks for Canadians, and wants to do less on the fight against climate change, because that's what he's proposing, he's going to have to explain that to all Canadians. Because right now, he has no plan for affordability, no plan for climate change, and, as we've seen again today, no plan for housing, which is why we're coming forward with a real announcement today. Um, on housing infrastructure, Prime Minister, uh, the, the $6 billion fund you announced last week, Ontario, as you know, has rejected four units as of right, which was one of your conditions. The province believes that the fund is subject to some negotiation, so can we get your view? Are the conditions for that fund non-negotiable, or is there room for some conversation? Oh, that money is going to flow. The only question that Ontario has to ask is whether it wants the money to flow through the province to municipalities or whether it flows directly to municipalities. We know that there are lots of communities, lots of people, lots of regions in this country that are very ambitious about doing everything necessary to get more homes built and to get families into those homes. And we're going to work with them. So the $6 billion on... Uh, 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 wastewater and uh, housing enabling infrastructure is going to be there to make sure we can grow our housing stock in this country. Ideally, we do it with ambitious partners in the, in the provinces. If the provinces don't want to do it, that just means there's more money to go directly to the municipalities. One way or another, we're going to be there to get housing built for Canadians. It just works a lot better, and to be honest, we can do even more as a country if the provinces decide to roll up their sleeves and get on board fully. Hi, Prime Minister. Laura Stone, Globe and Mail. Back to provincial relations. Uh, Alberta has a new bill that seeks to stop your government or federal governments from negotiating directly with municipalities, essentially saying stick to national policy not in my backyard, and she says it would be inefficient for you to negotiate all these agreements with hundreds of municipalities. Can you respond to her criticisms and why you would still pursue this? It seems like it was only a few months ago uh, that I pointed out quite accurately that the federal government uh, doesn't have a whole lot of direct carriage of uh, housing, that, uh, that it is very much a provincial and municipal responsibility. The federal government has certain responsibilities that we've been stepping up on since 2017, but I pointed out that this is not something the federal government can solve alone. And over the following weeks and months, we heard from a cavalcade of premiers saying, see, the federal government needs to step up more, needs to do more. It's get out of the business of housing. The federal government needs to step up and fix this housing crisis that we've seen across the country. 
So we are. Provinces should be careful what they wish for. They want the federal government to fix this housing crisis? We are. We will. Now, let me be very clear. It'll be much better if the provinces continue to step up with significant ambition. And we've seen a number of provinces do that. When we announced the housing accelerator funding, $4 billion across the country, Quebec said, you know what? We'll actually match the $900 million you're sending to municipalities in Quebec. We'll double it and we'll do even more, even faster. BC came forward and said, you know what? There's a BC builds program we've wanted to build around affordable housing. Um, we'll, if you can match the money we're doing, we'll do even more. And we did that and we created the Canada builds program. And we're working directly with municipalities that want to be super ambitious. The three mayors that are here today represent municipalities that signed housing accelerator agreements worth in excess of $150 million that's going to create 4,000 units over the coming years uh, in, this, uh, in this region. These are things we are doing concretely where we recognize that Canadians need help and support and investment and don't so much care about you know, whose responsibility it is first and foremost. They just want it to get done. And that's why we are there to work hand in hand in full respect with those provinces who want to solve the problem and ask those provinces that don't want to solve the problem to just get out of the way while we solve that problem that Canadians are facing. And Prime Minister, back to the foreign interference inquiry, much has been made of your admission, I suppose, during the testimony that you don't, you rarely read all of your intelligence briefings or that you don't read them all. Are you going to do that now? I read everything that is put in front of me. Uh, a Prime Minister takes in massive amounts of information and reads massive amounts of documents. I expect anything that is of particular high importance or uh, relevance to be elevated, and that's what that happens. Last question. Um, good afternoon, Prime Minister Mahmoudou, the Canadian Press. With the change in the NDP's position on carbon pricing, are you worried that this, the NDP is going to stop backing up your government in Parliament? I've spent a lot of time talking with Canadians across the country, particularly progressive Canadians. And I don't think there's a single NDP voter out there that doesn't want us to all do more in the fight against climate change. I understand the uh, political pressures on the NDP leadership right now uh, and the challenges of holding an unpopular position. But doing the right thing should be something that progressive voters in this country can count on. This government will continue to stand up in the fight against climate change, should do everything with all the tools necessary to fight climate change and to protect our planet for future generations, while continuing to put more money in the pockets of eight out of 10 Canadian families right across the country. I'll leave it to Jagmeet Singh to explain why he's stepping back from the urgency both of the fight against climate change and the need to put more money in families' pockets. But I can tell you that this government will continue to be steadfast in putting a price on pollution and giving that price to Canadians to help with affordability. Thank you, Prime Minister. That concludes today's press conference. Merci beaucoup tout le monde. Thank you all.